Okay, Marco, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you good. Can you hear me? I can hear you well. Thank you. Awesome. Are you, uh, are you in, you're in Chile right now, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Chile, man. That's where yeah, you're the from. The quarantine caught, caught me here, so I, you know, I was, I was supposed to, I was re rehearsing for a movie, uh, and then everything got canceled, you know? Yeah, I think a lot of our lives have gotten put on hold. I was, I was supposed to be in Brazil this year, you know, to do some do some lecturing, and then uh, Spain and uh, all those things got canceled as well. So, hey, let me ask you uh, for you, um, for folks that don't know, Marco is a is an actor, film, uh, a stunt stunt person, and martial artist who is now following, I guess, a carnivorous diet. I saw in the background in the in the, in the history you been on a vegetarian diet at some point, you did a ketogenic diet, and now you've switched over to this carnivorous diet. But um, can you give us a little bit about your background for people that aren't familiar with you? Yeah, yeah, well, so I've been martial artist since I'm a kid. Uh, my mother was uh, the first black belt in Chile. <laughs> so I've been training for a long time martial arts, and I started making movies. Uh, my first big break was uh, doubling the rock on the movie, The Rundown. So I work, that's, that's how I, I, I went to, to the U.S. and start working there. And I work as a stuntman for him in that movie. I won a World Stunt Award. And then with that money and that kind of a experience, I learned from Andy Chang, this like right-hand side of Jackie Chan, stunt team and all that. I went back to, to I came back to Chile and then start my own uh, uh, production movies. Yeah, I start doing my own movies. So I, I produce and star on like four movies in Chile and that got the attention from the people to call me and go back to LA and now as an actor and doing my own like the villain and all that. So that's why I came back to, uh, to the US and start uh, the acting martial arts thing. And nutrition for me and performance has been always you know, something very important because uh, I, because of martial arts and my my skills, I got invited to make movies and all that. It was not, the, it's not like I'm an actor and suddenly I just learned some martial arts. So I've been, as a martial artist, I understand that nutrition and all that, it's a very important place, a very important role. But I did the common mistake that everybody, like, well, I, I hope I, w I had this information sooner. <laughs> I, you, you know, I could have met you sooner because it was crazy, man. It's like years and years training uh, with this traditional, like, steam rice, steam broccoli, steam chicken breast, steam, like, fear of fats and all that, you know, that we can get into, in, in, into all that story. But, yeah, and then little by little, I started discovering... Uh, you know, my body started breaking down, basically, uh, with all the trainings and, and the movies and all that. It's very intense. Like, one day of shooting, it's like sometimes you're 10 hours fighting. You got to do a fight scene and, you, you know, you have to be the whole day just doing that fight scene. A fight scene that lasts one minute in the screen. So you got to be explosive. You got to, you know, you have to be with that adrenaline the whole 10 hours. So the training that you, the, the way you need to prepare yourself to train for that, it's, a, it's like going to the Olympics. Like I, I take it uh, uh, like that. It's like I train, I prepare myself. I do cycles of training and power training, then explosiveness and speed training and all that to get to my, my movie, my shooting day, you see? So that's, I'm. Marco, what, what style of martial, martial arts were you proficient at? Or did you do a number of them? Or what was your kind of main style? Yeah, no, no, I, I've done, like, I started with karate when I was a kid, then I did kung fu, then I did taekwondo, I, I, I was invited for the national team of my country of taekwondo, then I started doing more acrobatics for the movies, then I did boxing, uh, and then I, in one of, a, one year I decided I wanted to become a fighter, so I kind of quit the movies for a little bit, and I started training to fight MMA, but then Robert Rodriguez called me, and he gave me a big role on uh, uh, the movie Machete Kills. So that was like, oh, you know what? I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I better continue with this movie career instead of starting to fight because that's one or the other. I didn't see it as, you know, I needed to quit all my movies in order to focus on fighting. So I've been training different styles. And now I just kind of like I train a little bit of everything, acrobatics, boxing, I keep my skills up, you know, a lot of strength training, power training, 
to keep the ability to jump. I do a lot of acrobatics, even though I'm a 6'2", uh, 210, I, I, you know, that's my specialty is like a very explosive kicks and acrobatics and stuff like that. So, yeah. Let me, let me uh, just, I want to just kind of just talk a little bit about what's going on in Chile, just because you're there. We like to get perspectives from around the world. We've got a lot of people from different parts of the world. How is Chile reacting to this coronavirus pandemic is it is it martial law is it are you allowed to go outside how what, what is the current situation no no actually yeah i got lucky man because i i came with a friend visit at the beach in a beach house and suddenly everything started going down and, and, and they start closing the cities so basically i cannot go back to the capital where's my family but actually i don't live in chile so i don't have a, my own place in chile i live in the u.s and in l.a so and I was like, damn, what I'm going to do? And they're like, they're like saying, you cannot go to your second, second house. So you basically have to live in your first home. If you have a beach house, you have to go back to your main house, right? And then the military is on the streets uh, controlling the, all the borders and all that. And, and there's quarantine. There's places that you cannot uh, leave your, your apartment only with a permit to go like a, for an emergency or something like that. So it's been going on like that, and you know, it's yeah, I I don't know, man. And the numbers still still growing, so you know, that's kind of where we are right now. And I got lucky that I was able to be in a place where I can train, I can you know go outside and kind of like figure out a way of training here. But yeah, it's it's cool. I don't have a lot of weights and stuff like that, but I'm doing a lot of plyometrics, uh, sprints, uh, jumps, and stuff like that to keep the agility, you know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You can you can train with no equipment. I when I sometimes I just find a rock and pick up a big rock. You know, you can find, you can yeah, find yeah. a big heavy rock you can throw or pick up or lift or whatever. There's a lot of ways you can train without equipment. So yeah, yeah. For me, it's 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 always that because as a, as a martial artist and and you know all the acrobatics and stuff like that I do, it's a lot of strength training. But also I need to all the time doing a lot of speed and jumping and plyometrics to keep that because there was a lot there's my cycles goes uh, you know I train a lot of strength for like a couple weeks like I don't know like four or five, five weeks but then I do I start lowering the weights and start doing like a very uh, more explosive training then even that is gone and it's just pure technique and very uh, technique oriented very explosive but with no weight sometimes an ankle weight and like in the legs and like the, the the vest the weight vests stuff like that but that's it and to be able to move fast and and and, and perform fast you see so that's i'm all the time kind of a rotating that type of training uh, i have a very good coach uh, that study you know in europe and and he kind of teach me was my mentor of how to train more more as an athlete because Man, I'm 41. So when I started this, it was back in the day. It was not even UFC yet. Like martial artists didn't train as athletes. They train as a, you know, they just, you know, they do, oh, I got to do uh, a thousand kicks and then I'm going to get stronger. No, it's like now, now you see UFC, how it changed the world of martial arts and martial artists now are, are like athletes, like professional athletes and they have coaches and they train like real athletes. So I started this long time ago, kind of with this coach. And that's why I, I guess... With this, with my six two, I'm able to to do backflips and and uh, court screws and twist in the air because, kind of like he helped me develop this more like an athlete perspective and and performance kind of thing. So, uh, Marco, as some as a Chilean, the culture I, mean, I know in much of South America, you know, particularly you hear about places like southern Brazil and Argentina, uh, but I assume Ch Chile. I mean, meat is still considered a very vital part of the the diet a very prized part of the diet i know i, I was asked i'm asked I'm, someone's asked me to come down to chile and speak in november and i'm not sure if i'll be able to make it or not hopefully but how did you um so tell talk to me about your nutrition plan through the years and i know you sort of did vegetarian for a while how did that work and 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 then let's talk about your kind of transition to carn carnivore diet yeah well well it's a lot it's a it's a it's a kind of, I'll, I'll i'll try to make it as as more understandable as possible but you know, first in Chile, people here eat horrible, you know, like they, they, the bread is like the number one thing they eat. So that's kind of the, the best, basic thing in Chile, bread and soda, like bread and soda. That's kind of like what people eat, right? Um, meat, yes, but of course it has a bad rep. 
we're still on that like meat is gonna kill you you have to eat vegetables and fruits to be healthy that's kind of everybody no even my father man i'm trying to like it's my father. It's like, man, I'm telling you, it's like, no, the doctor tells him this. And I'm, how are you going to fight a doctor? You know, it's like, man, I'm like, look, I, I, it's not my idea. I'm following people that are serious on this. And my, you know, but you know, you're not going to change, uh, you know, his mentality. This happens in Chile and in a lot of places, I guess, you know, like, I don't know how long it's going to take for people to see this. But in my, my story was very like, I eat as a traditional kind of, a uh, healthy diet, no fat, steamed rice, steamed broccoli, uh, steamed chicken breast, some fruit. You know, uh, I, I remember after training, I used to do this big ham uh, with bread. So I have my carbs and my protein. That's the whole thing. Carbs and protein for recovery, for training. And you know what? Yeah, I was ripped. I was, but I get, when I was, th when I turned 34, 35, I remember start breaking down like really bad. I start developing an acne, strong acne in my face. Like, I'm telling you, man, these, these big pimples that it hurt like this. I'm like, what's happening? What's wrong? And I went to a dermatologist. Oh, no. You know, they start giving me these weird pills that dries your eyes. I'm like, man, I'm stopping this. And it was very aggressive. And then this thing came back again. Then I was falling asleep everywhere, man. Like I was in my car, red light. And, and the car in the back, bang, 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 and, I'm, and I, was, I, I felt just leaping the red line. I'm like, man, this is something's happening. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm training too much. Uh, I don't know, like uh, maybe I'm training, but I'm like, come on. I, can, I, I know that I train too much, but I cannot be in a restaurant. And like my head was like, I could not beat the sleep. And I was about to go to a doctor said, what's going on? And in that moment, I was eating a lot of carbs because I was like, oh, I'm training too much. So I need more sugar to train better and more. So it was carbs before training, carbs during training, carbs after training, and then the protein to recover. But protein was just chicken breast and a lot of whey protein shakes, right? And yes, I was ripped, but I couldn't, I couldn't walk, man. I was breaking down. And then when things got really bad is when my knees start got, getting inflamed. I started getting inflammation. I remember before the movie Redeemer that I did, I went to the doctor and he's like, no, man, you got to do surgery. You got to do surgery. You know, your knee is done. Your meniscus are done. Uh, you know, and I, tr I, ha I have a good training and then my knee got very uh, swollen. And then the other knee, the same thing. And I'm like, man, maybe I'm getting old. I'm done. And I'm like, yeah, every athlete retires like around 30 or something. So yeah, I guess I got to start thinking that I got to retire or something. I cannot train like this anymore. And man, and sadly, uh, a friend of mine, Sebastiano Vallarzal with Carlos Cardemil, that are my coach, Carlos Cardemil, he told me, man, you got to check on this high fat diet. And that blew my mind. I was like, what? I'm telling you seven years ago, like when this was not really popular or anything, I'm like, and then I start, I switch, I'm very, I start studying this, I switch and I'm telling you, man, in like I, in three weeks, my energy levels were like, I never had this falling sleep sensation. I'm telling you, like in, in three months, my, my skin was clear. Like I, I didn't have any more this inflammation in my forehead. And then I'm training, my knee didn't swollen. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is not possible. Then I, okay, whatever. I finished the movie. I continue with the diet and then I train, then the knee never got swollen again. Seven years after, up to today, my knee never got swollen again. So I switch, I, and I, then this, my brain explode like this. And I'm like, I have to study this. So that I went very deep. I start following Dominic D'Angostino, Jeff Bollock, all these like ketogenic heavy people and, and studying all this research. And I became like a addict of ketogenic, uh, uh, diet and like understanding this and I, com I i did the first mistake where i started cooking my keto bombs uh, keto brownie keto desserts keto thing and at the beginning like one year and something i remember passed and i started getting more into it i started cooking a lot and then i started gaining weight and i started didn't feel feeling good not the inflammation of my knee and anything but i did i remember a blood test and my blood test came totally opposite of what the people were telling me about ketogenic diet. You know, my triglycerides went up, my blood sugar in the morning start, you know, in the hundreds and five, 110, 
And I'm like, what's going on? And then my LDL particles, like it went from A to, to B. Uh, yeah, so A to B and then all, all, the, all the wrong numbers, right? And I'm like, what, why? My inflammation state is still low and all that, the uh, C-reactive protein and homocysteine. And I freaked out when I see my triglycerides and then my total cholesterol was like 400. And I'm like, there's something wrong here. And I did some research back then. There was not a lot of information. And I arrived to uh, Dave Fleetman or some, uh, the, yeah, him, that he has a lot of research on cholesterol. And I'm like, that gave me like, okay, you can sleep tonight. I, I thought that I'm going to die of a heart attack that day when I saw those numbers. I'm like, damn. And I got to that conclusion because the information that I had in that moment that maybe I'm sensible to saturate fat. I was cooking too much. I, uh, you know, like keto bombs with a lot of coconut oil, MCT oil, butter, like a cream, heavy cream. So I'm like, yeah, maybe, I, maybe that was too much of saturated fat versus the monounsaturated fat. The, the, that, that relationship was not natural. I was over-exaggerating on the saturated. So that was one of the theories that I, that I heard about these hyper-responders uh, in the ketogenic diet. I'm like, maybe it's that. And then, but maybe it's stress levels because I was shooting a movie and I was shooting a, a TV show at the same time. I was not sleeping right. Maybe it was that. So maybe there's a deficiency in vitamin B12 in the, in the, in the B vitamins because of the adre adrenals. My adrenals were done. So there was a lot of theories. And I, I'm, in conclusion, I was like, okay, I'm going to reduce the saturated fat. I'm going to uh, start uh, doing more like olive oil and stuff like that instead, instead of the butter and all that, that stuff. So I did this adjustment and my numbers went down and I started kind of lower, uh, lowering my weight again. And I'm like, oh. And that's why I like, maybe I have to be vegetarian. This was my own conclusion because of all these things that was happening, right? So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. I, I tried vegetarian. Uh, so I started doing a lot of heavy like avocado, uh, olive oil, uh, olives. Uh, I started eating a lot of like big, big salads with a lot of nuts and seeds. And I saw like in the plants, my nutrients. Or like, okay, I got to make a big salad, a bowl of salad to be, to, to get this hungry, uh, to be, to, to feed myself and get all the, the nutrients. And I was adding all the fats to be on the ketogenic rate, ratios. So then I was, I measured my sugar, my, my ketones and all that. And I was like, okay, I'm in ketosis and all that. So I did that for like a year and a half, but it got to a point that I start having problems with my digestion my recovery was not the best training uh but i was good I, you know, I was able to do it but the the number one problem was that i have to supplement with because there was no way i could make my my protein intake for for training and all that so i was doing amino uh, essential amino acids i was supplementing with uh, vitamin b12 i was supplementing with omega uh, omega 3 dha and epa from algae so I was, I'm like, there was a moment that I saw myself and my, my house was like a lab. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I mean, how this could be natural, right? If to be able to continue on this diet, I have to be like a, like a, I have to have a lab in my, in my house. And I spend hours and hours cooking because in my understanding is like, we cannot absorb the nutrients from the plants. So I have to uh, do, use pro probiotics and like fermented foods. And I have to, like, I remember I, I, I put the nuts and seeds in water, then I add probiotics. So the probiotic kind of um, that pre-digest the food before I eat it. So I can, so I'm like, man, come on. Like there was a moment that I was so tired of this and, and I smell like a barbecue and my, my mouth was watering, like literally. And I'm like, this, this cannot be, this, I have to listen to this. So then I start, no, you know what? I'm going to eat meat once a week. Okay. And that day of that week, man, was, was like the best. Like, it was like, it was too much, man. Then, okay, I'm going to do twice. A, and then little by little, I said, you know what? And then I start like, I remember I saw your, your, your Instagram and the, this carnivore thing. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try this. The problem was that there was a lot of things of the planet and saving the world and blah, 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 this vegan kind of uh, big uh, propaganda that you kind of fall into that and, and you feel that like you're helping. You have this 
spiritual calling of, you know what, I don't want to kill animals. But then you start hearing all this other side of the story, right? Like uh, the, uh, you know, the sustainable agriculture, you know, when you, when you, when you buy meat out of free range and grass fed and, and when you see the, the pictures of like a, mo like a soybean thing and then the grass fed and you're like, this doesn't make sense. Like I, I'm saving, what I'm saving here, I'm, I'm destroying the planet by trying to like create this food. So, so then it, my mind explodes again. It's a big change, but I, tr but I change it. And today, man, I'm telling you, I'm like, I've been like, uh, I'm going for the two years more carnivore. So now my mind totally switched. Before was big salad, all my nutrients. And the animal products, I use it for, okay, a little bit of nutrition, uh, uh, protein, right? Then I went to uh, vegetarian. But at the beginning, I was like big salad, all my nutrients, all my minerals, all my um, uh, vitamins and all that. And then the protein was the, the animal product. But now it's a big change because I don't see any more minerals or vitamins in the, in the plant uh, world. And I understand this is more bioavailable for my body and all that. So I switch into this uh, carnivore thing and I'm, my, my training is better. My recovery is faster. I never had this problem in digestion. I, and I feel great. I, but, I, but, I, but I still wanted to have, I have these questions because I've learned so much about ketogenic, uh, ketosis and being a, in a ketogenic state and these benefits of having ketones in your body. So I still, I'm still studying and understanding, you know, after all this research of these people that are very smart and are, you know, working hard on this and having these findings of having ketones in your body uh, and then this carnivore diet where I feel great. I kind of feel the same benefits, you know, inflammation, recovery, I'm even better. I train harder. I recover faster. It's crazy, right? But I don't have the ketones present in my, in my body as much as going into a keto, in, into a keto uh, more uh, approach, right? So I was like, okay, I got to experiment now. Maybe I should add more uh, fatty meats or I should add butter or I should add olive oil. That's kind of like the, the, in, in, in the search that I am right now, trying to understand this and, and actually pick your brain and, and what's your experience. If you have this kind of a, if, if you have tried this type, of, this type of a difference in the carnival world kind of thing. Be yeah, there's a, you know, there's, there's something called PKD, uh, which people will do carnivore in a ketogenic fashion and they'll focus on getting ketones and, uh, certainly some people do benefit from that. Um, I find as an athlete, as someone that trains hard, I think it's hard to, to do that with lower protein. I, I, it's hard to do the performance that you might find. And so I think as long as, uh, you know, you are having your energy that needs met, as long as you're performing well, as long as you're maintaining muscle, then you probably, okay, continuing to do, you know, as you're doing, that's, that's been, you know, the experience. Now, if you see, you know, things like blood, blood sugar issues, like you saw before, um, and that can, you know, as I, as I delve more and more into the cause of insulin resistance, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that you can, you know, any sort of macronutrient in excess can lead to insulin resistance. We certainly see it with carbohydrates via things like over secretion of insulin or chronic secretion of insulin. We can see it with fat. Fat can lead to de novo lipogenesis and that can occur either through carbs or fat. Uh, and then protein, um, you know, if eaten beyond needs, and, and it's hard to do. That's the nice thing about a carnivore diet is that um, it's hard to overeat meat. I mean, it's doable, but it's very difficult, you know? And so uh, most people, but what's a, what's what's an overeat in your in your in in what do you mean with that? Because I'm six two, I'm two ten, yeah. and I realize that I can you know I can eat like around uh, a kilo, one kilo. I don't know what's in. The... Yeah, yeah, that's 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 certainly not that much. I mean, I'm talking, you know, when you start getting into two kilos, three kilos, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. You know. Yeah. Not okay. But then, that. but then the problem with that is like what I, what I was saying. When you eat too much protein, right, then you, you transform the excess or you create sugar 
and then you're basically running out of sugar, not in, not in fats, right? So the Your research, metabolism. yeah, the research on that basically shows if you're not diabetic, it's very, very difficult to turn protein into sugar. Uh, if you are diabetic, there are some changes that occur with the gluconeogenesis in, from, the, from the liver where it's a little easier to do. And it's that it, you end up becoming glucagon dominant and insulin because you're insulin resistant, your insulin is less effective. And so for a normal, healthy person that doesn't have diabetic, uh, you know, pathophysiology, it's, it's difficult to overeat protein. It, it, yeah, but, you know. yeah, I don't know, but I'm not saying, I'm not saying that as a, as a bad thing. I'm saying, okay, I'm a carnivore, right? And I want to eat mainly, I eat mainly animal product and I, but I train a lot and I need, the, I need energy, right? So the question is, I remember I, in, in a time I remember eating like the YU, but that's a very expensive cut and all that, but as an experiment, and I realized that that cut has more, much more monounsaturated fat and has a different type of fat profile, right? And I remember my ketones were up and all that. And I felt like euphoric and I felt good. My question is how you can, in a budget, how, you, what, what's your opinion adding fat? Like, for example, what do you think about olive oil? What do you think about coconut oil to add into this carnivore approach to sometimes you know, don't have to overeat protein and add some calories from fat to be able to have that energy for performance purpose, instead of having to eat so much protein to get uh, glucose from protein for performance. Because I'm sure with all the protein that you're eating and the way you're training, you're getting that energy from like the, you're getting, you're, you're, you're getting your glycogen stores full because of the, the protein that you're eating. Because if you're not eating sugar and you're eating a lot of fat, where do where you get your, your, your energy from training? Like that's kind of my... Yeah, so I think, again, it depends on the intensity of the training. I think, you know, when we look at protein consumption, you know, first, first requirements that are need met with protein are structural. So the amino acids we get go into structure first or at least predominantly. And then when those needs are largely met, we then refill our glycogen stores, uh, so liver and muscle glycogen. And then if, there's, if you eat beyond that, then you might see elevations in blood glucose. But for the most part, it is, uh, you know, you, you know you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna meet those needs. And then fat, you know, also, because you're gonna get a lot of fat with meat, or you can potentially, particularly if you eat fatty cuts of meat. Uh, we look at athletes uh, and they have a high amount of fat in their muscle, particularly athletes on a high fat diet. And that's not necessarily negative in athletes. In diabetics and non-athletes, fat in the muscle, particularly if it's ceramides or diacylglycerides, which are specific types of fat, they're products, incomplete products of mitochondrial metabolism for beta oxidation. Um, you see that uh, that's a different situation. But for for you know for training, it depends on what kind of training you know I'm doing or someone else is doing. If it's you know, not the highest intensity, then you're, you're using fat. And I think that's where you can get it from your diet. And I think, you know, when we look at a hierarchy of how I, I think animal fat, um, you know, is a better place to get your fat. So that would be the fat on the meat. You know, you could, you can argue about, you know, Wagyu with has higher, higher, higher amounts of monounsaturated fat. And some people will benefit on that. And then beyond that, then I think you, you kind of, for some people, dairy fat is okay. Many people it's not. Some people, the plant fats, coconut oils, the MCT oils, um, you know, they can be okay, but for some people they're problematic. And for some people that have sensitivities, things like salicylates and things like that, that they're, they're less yeah. ideal. So I, I would, you know, I, my first focus would be just get animal fat. And I don't know how hard it is where you're at, you know, if, if they, in Chile, if the animals have a lot of fat on them or if they throw the fat away like they do in the U.S., unfortunately. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> I remember when I started the ketogenic thing and I was doing this I, I was adding fat to everything that I think now that you're saying, yes, was more, I don't think it was the excess amount of saturated fat. It was the excess amount of fat and calories. And that's why my triglyceride went up and like my body was like getting too much energy. I remember going to restaurants that, to get the, shaw the shawarma and, I, and they throw the fat, right? I'm like, no, no, no. And, and, I, and I make them bring it in a plate, the fat. And I, I became famous in the restaurant because they were like, what man, this guy is so weird, you know? But I was eating a lot, like I think I was eating too much plus all the coconut oil and all that. But 
but yeah, it's like, yeah, here the only way it's like adding a little bit of butter because the, yeah, the animal is not, doesn't have a lot of fat in naturally, right? And well, that's kind of what I'm trying to, to do right now to see how I feel better. And I, then I see you training and, and, and now eating, you know, more lean cuts and fish and all that. And I see you're all ripped. I'm like, man, he got something going on here. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask him. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I'm trying to experiment and see if I lower my calories as a, in a ketogenic ratio in the carnivore, as a carnivore, or I just forget about the, the, the ketogenic ratios and then I just eat, you know, to satiety uh, protein and, and animal uh, uh, products, you see? That's kind of the, 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 I'm trying to check my blood sugar and see what ha what's happening in my body doing these two different experiments. Yeah, I think, you know, like, like in my case, you know, I do better, you know, I, I get leaner when I eat a little bit leaner meat. I mean, that's just clear. I mean, particularly where I'm at at this point. Um, I do do a, a fat refeed. So I mean, on like tomorrow will be my fat Friday where I'll just load up on fat. So I think, I think that um, fat is still very important. And you have to have it for hormonal purposes for just yeah cell integrity i mean our fat is brain health all these things fat is in incredibly vital to the diet the question is how much is enough and how much is too much and how much is not enough and i think sometimes you know we we sort of just you know people say just eat as much fat as you possibly can that does get people into trouble um i think you know there is and i know this is a bad word here but i do think calories do have a role and i think you know the nice thing about a carnivore diet is most people can eat um, they're full, they're, they're full of food. M many people will eat more than they used to, uh, and still lose weight. And I think that has to do with the fact that protein in particular is, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's metabolically expensive to process. It requires more energy. You can eat more of it. Um, there is probably some advantage to decreasing carbohydrates when it comes to metabolism. So there is a net overall effect of, you know, you can eat some more. Uh, for many people however there is a there still is an upper threshold where you can you can get into a point now i know some people say well i've eaten you know i can eat a lot in one day and i don't gain weight and i think but if you do that consistently over time you know i don't think you'll get morbidly obese but i do think you you you, you won't quite be you know necessarily at your goal depending on what your goal is if your goal is you know just being you know super lean then it's hard to do that eating you know just copious amounts of fat um, yeah, so and I, think, then, yeah. But you, but I, I definitely agree that the calories have a play important role. But w the, for example, in, in your case, you train, you eat it to satiety, you kind of understand how many calories you eat every day, you kind of have an, a rough idea or you just follow your satiety. Because one of the one of the, the problems that I did, rem I remember I did also, I was writing down everything, right? So I was looking my calorie chart with the chronometer and I go, and I'm like, ah, I'm eating this much, this much of protein, this much of fat. So the day that I didn't, maybe I was not hungry and I didn't reach the number, I was like, oh, I can continue eating. So when you track your macro, sometimes, you know, people make this mistake that happened to me where you kind of want to meet those numbers. And the human body doesn't work like that. One day, maybe you're going to eat less because you're less hungry. One day, you're going to eat more. You're going to compensate. So that, that was a big problem also that I discovered, even though now I still track them as an experiment. But after I eat, I finish eating, and then I kind of remember, okay, what I ate. So this way, it, I, don't, I don't change what I eat because of the number that says in the computer, right? So that's kind of what I want to ask you, how you do that with the... With the with the calorie kind of, do you track, do you kind of have an idea of what's your, your calorie intake? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, for me, I just, um, because I've been doing it so long, I, I kind of know how much I need to eat to get through the day, depending on what I've got scheduled. Um, like, like right after this, I'm going to row 10,000 meters. I'm going to eat a big, huge feast of steak and fish. And then later in the afternoon, I'm going to do some more strength training. And, you know, and then if I'm hungry at night, I might eat yeah. again. But if I'm not, I might just eat one meal a day. But I mean, I'll probably put down 300 grams of protein uh, in that one meal. Um, so, but I mean, your point of the fact that, you know, it changes day to day uh, is definitely true. I mean, this is one of the problems people get in when they say, I'm going to eat X amount of calories and X amount of fat. Um, the problem is, you know, how did you sleep? 
how much, how much, uh, you know, what's going on that activity wise that day. Are you exercising harder? Are you exercising less? Do you have a cold? Are you stressed out? I mean, all of those things, you know, what's the temperature outside? I mean, the temperature outside changes your metabolic requirements. If it's cold, you got to generate more heat. And so you need more calories to do that. Um, that's why Inuit used to eat, you know, six pounds of meat a day. I mean, because they were, they lived in a place where it's freezing cold and they had to, they were constantly having to generate body heat. So, um, yeah, I think that's a good point that, uh, yeah, that's a big mistake that I made it. And and I, I'm giving a, 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 I'm I'm letting the people that are following this that, you know, that's a big thing. You know, when you want to make it so perfect that you measure everything, then that totally is going to get you because that's not how it works though. And I make that mistake, like, and I saw the, you know, my blood work and it went, it went downhill, you see? So that's why I was asking, so you eat once a day, but you kind of, yeah, you once or twice a day. Yeah, I'm, me too. I'm kind of gravitating to eat once or twice a day, depends. But I have this thing, man, that sometimes I, I eat and I need that change of flavor. Like I'm, because of the ketogenics, when I started, I was, I, I was very big. I'm very big on the... Uh, dark chocolate, like 90% chocolate. You don't, you, you don't have any treats like that where to finish your meal or you just eat the meat, the fish, and that's it. That's, and then you don't have any, what, what's your, what do you do after you finish that, the, the fish and the, the steak, for example? I'm, I'm pretty much done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might, I might, you know, like, like I said, I, sometimes I'll have some bone broth if I'm, you know, like recently, you know, this, I mean, again, this is a weird time for me because I'm actively trying to lose weight. I'm actually trying to get really lean for, for competing in CrossFit. So this is not my normal approach to diet. This is just for this sort of period of time where I'm, you know, trying to go from 240 to 225 or something like that. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to really lean out. So I have a specific goal, a specific time frame, and I'm specifically working on this. But I mean, once I get there, I will probably revert to more of a just, you know, you know, eat to appetite, you know, eat to, uh, satiety not worry about it uh, but you know like i said just for this specific goal and again this is this is this is not normal human physiology what i'm doing right now when i talk about this i mean most people don't need to be sub 10 percent body fat most people uh don't uh you know wild humans don't have to do this and so yeah, it's, no, it's, it's kind of a uh, so you can be very healthy and most people in here for most people in this you know the, the 50 some people that we have here have gained health just by eating to satiety without tracking anything. And they've seen significant improvements. Now wow. there are, there, there are a few people that struggle and there's things they have to make some adjustments. And I think that's fine too. But I mean, you know, I think that the, the natural human diet is a meat heavy diet for sure. In my view, I mean, I think for most of us, I mean, there's not a society ever that doesn't prize meat, you know, except for these crazy. For sure, for sure. Like I experienced all, I, I actually did some vegan days. Like I'm telling you, man, I did the whole thing and I follow into that whole speech and, and it makes sense and it's so powerful. And you see all these doctors that, that talks and blah, blah, blah. And of course it's like, you know, but you got to experience it and you got to do it to understand that doesn't make sense. You see, it's just, you have to do it and understand, okay, how are you going to put that big salad with all these different elements like beans and rice and like uh, kale and carrot and the, I'm like how I'm if I'm you know in the wild how I'm gonna I'm gonna replicate this it's impossible and if you don't do that then you're not getting your nutrients and you and then if you don't have a healthy microbiome you're not gonna even digest that and and you may be gonna abs- so it doesn't make sense but you don't see that until you really do the opposite and you 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 change your diet and you see how you feel and how easy it is. I don't take one vitamin now. I don't take any supplement. I don't take nothing, zero. Before, I, my, my place looks like a lab, and now I'm like, just, you know, go to the, get my, my steak, very easy, not cook, no nothing. It's like, it doesn't make sense, the other thing, if you just think about it. Yeah, but it's I, just so, something so simple, the human mind likes to complicate things so much, you know, it's like, I don't know, man. It's like, let, let me, so, let me, it's so, Marco, yeah. let me just ask you a little bit interesting. Cause you know, as, as someone who does acting and is around the film industry, there's sort of a lot of, it seems like a lot of people there sort of, sort of choose vegetarian vegan diets. 
Have you seen anybody like uh, sort of giving you trouble for eating just a meat-based diet or what's been your experience working in that community with regard to what people think is healthy nutrition? Yeah, well, of course, there's, it's, a, it's a thing now to be vegan, you know, because James Cameron is a, he's a very good, big director. And actually, I met him. I worked with him in the movie Battle Angel Alita. I had a big conversation with him, actually, about nutrition. Uh, but in that moment, I was more keto, right? And I actually told him, I said, look, man, you know, think about, because he was very big in this vegan thing. And he was, he told me that he was doing this uh, uh, oil from flaxseed and like protein powders and all that. And in that moment, I was more keto. I was not, you know, uh, a little bit of a, a plant and animal. And I was not a either or, but I kind of understood that, you know, what he was trying to do. But I said, hey, man, you got to, you got to, you know, eat some more fats and and look about keto. And I I kind of like, you know, tell him a little bit about that. But he, he was very like, he was very uh, 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 willing to take this new information and all that. And he, and I think he, I cannot see that he has like a money purpose with with what he's doing. Like, I don't like the people see uh, are are thinking you know i think that he's a very he you know he's james cameron man i don't think he has a money issue you know i think all what he's doing like like everybody like me he fall in that speech of like being vegan you're gonna save the world and because he's such a up there he's a guy that now he's worried about how to save the world he's not worried about paying bills being healthy it is the type of guys that have a different level of of, of goals right and he just believes that. And I do believe that he truly thinks that this way he can save the world until he's going to see the, 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 the reality that is maybe not that. And that's why the work that you're doing and, you know, and, you know, I, I was like, man, we need to help to promote this. And that's the same reason why I'm, I feel honored to be here talking to you. I have a lot of following and people that know me and I'm like, and we need to, we need to, talk about this because people they just been told one side of the story you see and when you and it's not you don't need to be very smart to understand this you don't need to it's, you don't need to be very smart it's just you we, we're being only we're being blind though but once you open your mind and you look the other side and you hear this other story then you understand and the in the community yeah, people, they're all following kind of James Cameron movement. And it's a, it's, a, it's a cool thing to say that you're vegan now. But I think that it's much more a uh, cool thing rather than it's going to turn forever. I think people, it's going to be a wave. You know, people's going to do this for a little bit. And then they're going to start realizing, oh, this guy has got sick. This guy got injured. This guy is not doing good. So it's going to pass, I think. It's not going to keep growing, right? It's it's not possible because people maybe one or two percent are the people that can do forever like like a rich roll you you heard about rich roll right you know he's a guy that's still vegan and he talks about it and he swears about it i i i was friend i'm friend of nimai delgado you know who nimai delgado is like the big bodybuilder vegan very nice guy and he's very so but but there are very unique cases you see that i don't know like it's not easy to follow a vegan diet right now. If I tell my friends and my people, hey, you gotta do a vegan diet and you gotta follow all these instructions, it's impossible. It's much more easy to someone to say, hey, just eat steak, ground beef, uh, beef liver, fish. That's natural, but hey, you gotta ferment this. You gotta grab the almond, put on water, soak in water, then put some probiotics because if not, your acid of the, in the stomach is not gonna be able to unlock the nutrients and then you have to eat all this salad and you're gonna mix this with that you got to be like a scientist to eat like that. And, and no, 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 not everybody has the budget to kind of be able and the time to be able to put that all together because you're not going to be healthy eating beans and rice, man. That's a lie. When they, 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 they tell the people, hey, no, we, we can save the planet because uh, you just give them corn instead of give them to the, the cows. It's like, come on, you're not going to, you're not giving them nutrition. They're going to still die. They're going to eat, but they're going to die anyway. So that's not a good point. But that's the, what people don't see. You see, that's the, the other story. But I think it's happening. You know, I think people are, are listening and, 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 you know, it's happening. I, 
I, I haven't had any negativity, but yes, there are some fanatics that, I mean, my ex-girlfriend from seven years, she's vegan. And that's the reason why I kind of, I'm telling you, man, and, and she swears by it and she's not going to change for a spiritual thing. There's nothing I can do, you see, but I don't know, man, I, you know, uh, it's not, it's not so aggressive. I think it's, like I said, it's a way that is going to pass, you know, it's a, it's hip right now. It's cool to say hey, I'm vegan. You know, it's like people feel, Oh, I'm an actor. I gotta be vegan. It's more like that kind of thing, you know? So are you, you know, I guess maybe, I don't know how often you get back to Chile, uh, to, to home, but are you finding that, uh, you're, that, that you've met people that, uh, that you influence uh, that are taking up or trying a carnivore diet? Are you finding anybody that, that's following along with what you're doing? Yeah, a lot. I actually, it was, a, it was a funny because I came back and then all my family and, you know, friends and friends of my ex-girlfriend are all vegan. She has, she actually created a restaurant, a hotel that the most sustainable hotel in Latin America and has a big, huge, uh, you know, it's a full of people, like a, one of the number one restaurants in Chile right now with a lot of vegan things and some of them like i remember i created the 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 pizza it's a pizza with a ketogenic pizza vegan with a with a flaxseed crust almond almond flour and all that and it's still there and people and but and now i arrived back after a couple of years and i'm like i see in the restaurant the only thing i eat is meat and i bring my it's so funny because it's like but people are like yeah i gotta try that because they see that i'm good everybody's like oh marco i see that you're you're strong, man. You look good. You look healthy. What are you doing? Like, man, this is the truth. I got to tell you. I, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, a couple of years, I was telling you totally the opposite. I got to be humble. I said, look, man, this is what I'm doing right now. And I feel great, man. You know, it's like, I, I don't, it's easy. It's easy. That's, I think the most important thing is that. It's like, it's just easy to do. And you feel great. It's no struggle. Be, there was a moment that my diet became in became a stress. I wanted to go to a restaurant and I wanted to be keto and vegetarian. Good luck with that. It's man, it's it was it was such a like because the key the keto benefit, nobody can take that out of me. Like for sure I gotta be keto in, in my mind because of the inflammation, my knee pain and I feel better in 41 than when I was 30, man. I, I'm training harder. I'm better. I do all my moves, everything. I'm, so, of course, keto, uh, keto, being in a ketogenic state, it helped me so much. Now, you know, I'm not going to give that up, but I, I continue my search to understand. And that's why I thought that it was a vegan, vegetarian. No, no, you know, now it's more like a, it's a carnivore approach, right? So I can go everywhere. I can go to a restaurant. I can, or it's, it's a easy, you know, it's like, it's logical. It makes sense. That's, that's kind of my, my, my experience so far with this, you know? What is a, just, uh, cause I'm, I'm starting to think about food and getting hungry here, but what, uh, <laughs> what kind of the Chilean specialties are there with, with meat or anything that's just unique to Chile that is, uh, that is popular there? The problem is all mixed with, with, uh, for example, la empanada is like a mix with meat and onion and stuff like that. And it's covered with this flour, with this crust of like a bread kind of thing. So is the, here is the heavy bread, but also it's a heavy barbecue country. So for everything, there is a barbecue. For every, every celebration, barbecue, very, it's similar to Argentina, you know. And the good thing is that there's a lot of grass-fed local like i'm i'm lucky now i'm in a town in the beach town where i go to the butcher and they just bring the cow and they the, the cow is just right there eating grass it's like there's no it's free range there's not a big industry here it's all local so it's pretty good and the and the fish that you, they just take it out and then you just see and they cut it for you so that's a pretty cool you know and I, and that makes sense. And then I'm like, okay. And now you're telling me that this is makes more sense in, in, uh, helping the, the environment. I'm not transporting anything. I'm just eating a local thing that they're just cutting it right in front of me, you know, instead of, Oh, what I'm going to eat a soy organic, whatever, 
with uh, all these weird products that are, you know, it's so much th uh, things needs to go on to create these products. You know, so it, then you start understanding this makes more sense. And how you're going to eat local in a vegan or vegetarian diet is much more hard to get all your nutrients and all your stuff. So that's when my brain start like making, oh, this makes sense. You see? Yeah, what's been the sort of the, the sort of the biggest benefit for you for going on, on a carnivorous diet? Have you found anything that's surprising? I mean, you, you talked about acne and some of these other things. Have you seen any health benefits outside of performance? Uh, well, no. Yeah, the the number one benefit, man, is recovery, digestion, and inflammation. Like digestion, it's like. I never had issues with my digestion before it was all the time weird, man. I don't want to go <laughs> get into details, but it was weird. It was something going on, you know, like, uh, you know, multiple times a day, you know, like not, that didn't make sense. Right. Uh, now it's just, you know, perfect. And then, uh, infl training and recovery. I didn't realize how much I could recover so fast before i thought that it was okay I, you know i'm older so i take longer to recover but now i'm like man i i recover i'm you know i'm recovering much so you don't know until you experience you experience it and the first time that i i did a more like a heavy carnivore when i was keto but it was like uh you know it was a coincidence because i went to india i went to uh, i was in mumbai uh, shooting the movie with someone can uh, the movie sultan and because you know in india oh don't eat any vegetables or anything like that because uh, raw because you can get sick in the stomach because of the different bacteria and stuff like that so everybody got sick i was the only one that didn't because the only thing i ate was lamb and it was like cooked animal products so i was like man i'm only just gonna eat I'm going to go heavy keto with animal products. I'm not going to eat any greens. And in that movie, man, my recovery was, was just amazing. And I, I remember, I was like, wow, man. I remember that day, that, that, time, that time. It was like a one-month shoot, and we were doing heavy fight scenes. And I was just eating, like, I remember lamb chops and, like, chicken and, like, fish and, like, all, like, cooked. I, I make sure it was cooked so I don't get sick in the stomach. And everybody got, got, got issues and I didn't. And I was very, very, I was recovering very good. Like after 10 hours fighting, next day, a little sword, warm up, I was ready to go. It was, it was very impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's been my experience. I, I train every day pretty much and I have no problem, you know, training hard almost every single day, you know, sometimes twice a day. And it's, it's I just recover well and I'm 53. And I, again, it's like I'm, you know, in my twenties. I mean, I just I don't have any. Man, any, yeah, that's any I, fifty-three. Man, I can, you know, that's, uh, you know, I really look forward for that. You know, I'm like, your inspiration, man, to see, because you know how people talk. No, when you're forty, you're gonna be done. When you're this, you're gonna be done. Like they they put this in your brain. And the problem was when I start experience when I was thirty, and I start experience all this in my knee, and you go to the doctor and everybody. That's what the people tell you. And it was like so frustrating, you know, but now, man, it's just boom. It's like, you, it, how come all this have to do with nutrition? And then you go to a doctor and nobody supports this. Nobody, oh, no, this have nothing to do with your food or what you eat. It's like, this is, it, it's just, I feel obligated to communicate this. You see, this is my, I have to, you see, because people are, are just living pain, suffering, no energy you know, uh, and, and it's all about the food. And they keep going to the doctor and wasting money going to a doctor to wait for an answer. And it's just so simple that, you know. Yeah, it, it is amazing that food makes such a huge difference. And it's, it's, it's insane that as medical professionals, we don't recognize that more. I mean, that's one thing that really is, uh, you know, you, I'll hear people that, that, that they'll go to the doctor and they'll say, food has nothing to do with your diagnosis. And more often than not, it completely does, you know. And so, and I, I appreciate that you're that you as a, as a, as someone who has a you know an influence on people as an actor, uh, that you're out there saying this because there's a lot of people that that would you know in the current climate they're embarrassed to admit they eat meat, you know. And I you know when Joe Rogan came out there and said he went on the carnivore diet, I thought that was very uh, very 
kind of brave of him to do that, you know, because I've, you know, I've been, uh, unfortunately, and some of it I brought on my health self because of vegans like to like to go after me and I push back against them. But, uh, uh, but it's hopefully you'll inspire more and more people. I know we've got uh, Jason Acuna, who's another actor coming on tomorrow uh, that is also on a carnivore diet. So we're getting more and more of these folks that, uh, um, you know, are out there saying, look, this is what I'm doing and it's working. And we just need to put aside the, the, the sort of the, ideology belief systems and really just pursue what works for us from a health standpoint which i think is real important yeah and when you see as a doctor when you see this is going to be like how come people are so how come this is not more like a mainstream like why my father keeps going to his doctor tells him that the cholesterol the bad cholesterol needs to be under whatever and the total cholesterol needs to be under 180 and my it's like it's just it's, it, it, my, it makes my brain want to explode because he goes to the doctor, oh, no, I'm fine. My cholesterol is 180. My triglyceride is like 150 and my HDL is 30. But my doctor says that I'm great. And he, he is fat, you know, he's all sedentary. And I'm like, what doctor could tell you that you're okay if you have the biggest thing is like, okay, you have a big belly and you have the ratio between that and your, your height and that's, the worst thing, and then the doctor's telling you're okay because your number in your cholesterol is this much. Like, when do you think this is gonna be like a more mainstream? How, what needs to happen for this to change? Like, you as a doctor, because you as a doctor, you, you cannot recommend this. What's the, there is a law behind it, there is a protocol that you have to follow. What's the, how it works because it's frustrating, you know? Well, I think, you know, some of the stuff that, that needs to be done is being done. You know, like I said, we have a study coming out with Harvard University, which we're in process right now. Uh, so I encourage people to participate in that study, promote that study. You know, if, you do, if you're not aware about the, aware of it and you want to promote it to your followers, that will help to get, get this into the, the medical literature so physicians will feel more comfortable prescribing it for their patients. Um, you know, maybe more doctors will open up their minds and say, look, wait a minute, we, we may have some things wrong. So that's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a grassroots type of thing. You know, we're, we're not gonna get the food companies to support research that uh, is going to have people not eat their food. I mean, it doesn't make sense. And so uh, it's gonna come from us, more of us standing up saying what needs to be done. Uh, fortunately, some researchers like David Ludwig at Harvard and Belinda Leonard's, uh, who are not, they're not associated with the uh, Walter Willett part of Harvard. They're a completely separate entity. Uh, and so these guys have, have uh, come out, you know, saying, hey, we're going to, we're going to study this, which I think needs to be done. So um, there's, uh, you know, like I said, there's more and more uh, research that's supporting what we do uh, in, in a number of different ways. Uh, you just got to, you just got to look for it. And, uh, you know, I, I think it takes, all of us as a community stepping up and saying, look, we're, we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do what gives us good health. And we're, we're not so worried about, uh, you know, one particular lab value versus, you know, a whole entire system of health. Yeah. So. But that's, that, that's a, a decision of each doctor, like a kind of doctor here, for example, start applying this uh, or he can get his license removed. That's a, that's how true of that there is that, that if a doctor, okay, uh, a patient arrives and has a 300 in co total cholesterol, but his triglycerides are okay and all that, and he understands this, but he doesn't recommend statin drugs because, oh, you got to lower your cholesterol. That, if there's a protocol, how, how true of that is it a protocol or is just the doctor b believes? Like, it, it, there's a, this is... So as far as... Um... You know, obviously there's uh, guidelines coming from American Heart Association and others that will recommend that someone with 300 cholesterol is going to be put on a statin for the most part, particularly if they have any other uh, comorbidities. There is uh, the computer systems now uh, sort, of, sort of navigate you there. They like flag it. They like give you a big red sign that says, hey, this person's cholesterol is so high. We think you should recommend a statin. So there's algorithms built in to drive everybody in that direction. So it takes the thinking out. It just, it just, mm -hmm. it doesn't say, Hey, but, 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 but they but they don't have high cholesterol. They don't have high triglycerides and they don't have inflammation and they don't have uh, glucose issues. So we have that now, as far as, you know, 
there may be some uh, some litigation. Let's say you have a patient like that who you failed to put on a statin, and then a year later they have a heart attack. They may be able to come back and say, "Hey, because you didn't follow this guideline, we're going to sue you." And so a lot of doctors not, are fearful, oh, okay, okay, fearful of that. But as mm -hmm. far as I don't think, you know, at this point the licensing isn't isn't an issue. Um, there's still some freedom, at least in the U.S. Now it may be different, and it may may vary by state to state. But you know, like my issues around licensing that didn't really have to do directly with that sort of thing it more had to do with uh hospital and money and and stuff like that and that that got you know what independent review was changed but uh yeah but i mean there certainly are uh physicians that are fearful to go against guidelines uh for sure uh but that's where we have to uh that's why it's important to help with the research and that's why i keep trying to get cool. people to okay cool and i understand well, Marco, it's been an hour. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it's good to get to, <laughs> awesome. to meet you and talk to you. Um, uh, this is going to go up on, on our YouTube channel in a few days. Um, let me know what else I can do to help. Um, you know, I, I thank you for getting out there and spreading the word. Uh, it's another good, another good advocate for the diet. And I wish you continued luck. What's the next movie you got going on? What do you got going on? I assume this coronavirus thing, once it settles in, settles down. Yeah, well, I have I have two movies coming out: uh, the Green Ghost uh, that I shoot in uh, Texas, and then Invincible that I did in in Thailand. Uh, they're coming out; they're not out yet. And I'm shooting supposedly Mirage Man too, but got canceled, so I don't know. But people can check Undisputed or Machete Kills or you know Savage Dog that is in Netflix. You can see a little bit of my work uh, to have some fun in this quarantine. You know, Redeemer. You know, in Amazon Prime, they'll find them. There, there, there are some. There are some in Spanish and English, so they'll see in YouTube some some of my videos. Well, but thank, thank you. you, man. Thanks for the, this chat, and it was it was a lot of fun. And yeah, man, we gotta spread the word. And yeah, I'll I'll be I'll be in touch, man. Looking at your training, you know, asking you if you have some doubts and stuff like that. And we sure. we can stay in touch, man. Absolutely, great, man. All right, guys, I'm gonna shut it down. You guys have a good day. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Have a good day, we guys. Got, we got we got. Uh, Mr. Wee Man tomorrow. So take care, guys. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye.